Hello folks, welcome to the first episode of The Physics Show. I'm your host Rifat Bari, perfect ACT scorer, 1580 SAT scorer, and a perfect 4.0 GPA math and physics student at the City College of New York. I'm also the author of 55 Days in Darby, and today I'm going to introduce you to the laws of the universe. In this show, we're going to discover the mathematical equations that make our universe tick. Everything from the small things such as pendulums, springs, simple harmonic oscillators, to the large-scale macroscopic phenomena, black holes, star clusters, galaxies, nebulae. Believe it or not, all of these phenomena, all of these physical phenomena begin with one set of laws. And those laws were the creation of none other than Sir Isaac Newton. In 1665, he laid the foundation for all of physics with his three laws of motion. In this episode, we're going to discover what these laws entail and why they're so important in the first place. Let's begin with the first law of motion, the law of inertia, as it's so called. The first law essentially lays the restrictions for the other two. It tells you when you can apply Newton's laws in the first place. The first law says that an object in motion stays in motion unless perturbed by an external force. And likewise for an object at rest, stays at rest unless perturbed by an external force. While seemingly innocent at its face, this law, this simple first law, is the basis for the next two because it lays the definition of an inertial reference frame. An inertial reference frame is a reference frame where you can apply Newton's laws. A non-inertial reference frame, such as a rotating reference frame, like a merry-go-round spinning around a central axis of symmetry, is a non-inertial uh, reference frame. That's where you cannot apply Newton's laws. In a non-inertial reference frame, all sorts of bizarro things can happen. Objects can move for seemingly no reason, and forces can lead to seemingly bizarro effects. For example, if you're driving your car around a circular racetrack, you'll seem to be flung out of the car, as if there was some kind of a centrifugal force pushing you outwards, even though there is no such force. That, those kinds of fictitious forces, as they're called, are symptoms of non-inertial reference frames, frames where you cannot apply Newton's laws of motion. With that being said, now that we've laid the basis for when we can apply Newton's laws, let's head to the second law of motion. Force is equal to mass times acceleration. Every high school student has that drilled into their brains. And at first sight, it is seemingly innocent, right? F equals MA, what can be simpler? But it turns out this is a deceivingly complicated formula. F equals MA is extremely powerful. It tells you that if you can tell me the mass, how in a sense heavy an object is, times the acceleration, how much an object is speeding up or slowing down, I can tell you the net force on that object. Who cares? I care. Because if the net force on an object is zero, then all the other forces on that object have to cancel out. And so slowly I can start telling you what each force acting on the object is from the gravitational force to the normal force to the friction force. All of these forces you can pinpoint out if you know that the net force is zero. What about the M, the mass? If I tell you how much an object accelerates due to a given force, you can figure out the mass of that object from that. In fact, this equation tells you something more. It gives you a definition of mass. F equals ma is more than just telling you what force is defined as. It tells you what mass is defined as. Mass is defined as how much an object responds to a given force with some arbitrary acceleration. And finally, let's talk about that final variable, the a. The a itself is important as well because that a is the most important thing. F equals MA, solve for that A, what do you get? F over M. But that A is the change of velocity. And if you integrate the change of velocity, you'll get a velocity function over time. And if you integrate that velocity function, you'll get a position function in time. So, in essence, what F equals MA is telling you is that 
if you can give me the position and the velocities of every single particle in the universe at one time, I can tell you the position and velocities, but most importantly, the positions of these particles, of all the particles in the universe at any point in the past, present, or future. That's how powerful Newton's machinery is. All of that machinery comes in the form of that second law. That second law tells you in, in just three letters, in less than half a centimeter, you're being told the law of the universe. You're being told, you're being given the power to predict the future. In essence, if you can feed into Newton's second law, the present position and velocities of every particle in the universe, Newton's second law will in turn give you the position of every particle in the universe in the future and every particle in the universe in the past, all of their positions. And that is breathtaking. Just take a minute to appreciate that, if you will. And finally, Newton's third law says that every action has an equal and opposite reaction. Now, this is something that every physics high school student has to jug down in their memory. But just take a second to think about how counterintuitive that is, right? If every object, if I give a force of 100 newtons to the wall, and the wall is giving 100 newtons of force back to me, then how can anything in the world ever move? If, the, if for example, imagine a horse pulling a cart. If the horse exerts 100 newtons of force on the car, and the car, in turn, exerts 100 newtons of force on the horse, how can anything ever get moving? We are in a perpetual state of dismay. Nothing can ever move. If Newton's third law is true. But wait, Newton's third law says that every action has an equal and opposite reaction. But these actions and reactions are being applied to different masses, right? Yes, I pull back on the horse with 100 Newtons, but the horse is much heavier than the car. And so my force doesn't have as much of an impact. Yes, the moon pulls on the earth as much as the earth pulls on the moon. But the Earth's orders of magnitude times more massive than the moon. And so that force doesn't have as much of an impact. And there is one of the, there is the resolution to one of the most biggest misconceptions to Newton's third law. If Newton's third law is true, if every force has an equal and opposite reaction, how can things ever get moving? Because those actions and reactions are occurring to different masses. Anyway, folks, so hopefully... This was a great uh, review for you uh, of Newton's third laws. Uh, the first law says that uh, an inertial reference frame is a frame in which Newton's laws can be applied. The second law tells you that force is equal to mass times acceleration, a hugely important law that I hope to explore in greater depth in the future episodes. And the third law tells you that every action has an equal and opposite reaction. Thank you for watching this episode of The Physics Show. And if you have any questions, please leave them down below and I'll be answering audience questions uh, if they're interesting in the next episode.